Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with our special guest, Nick Vale. Nick, oh, great to see you again. Okay, um, this is show number 201. I mean, we've been at this for like five years or so. This is excellent. And you're getting it. You know, like, you know, there were three um, cover stories. First, uh, hit, um, world um, first cover stories on refuting, challenging free will in science magazines. The first one, Philosophy Magazine, came out recently uh, with a cover story, Challenging Free Will. So this is getting out there. So basically, this, this show is about why we don't have free will and why would, uh, it matters for us to know this. So Nick, uh, the way we usually start, let's just you know, explain to our audience what people mean when they say, oh, and the, the, the title of today's episode is going to be Free Will, um, Atheists, and God. And we'll explain a bit about that later. But before we do that, Nick, just ex just describe to the audience what people mean when they say free will. What people mean by free will is that basically that nobody is forcing you, or coercing you, have a gun to your head, threatening you that if you don't do something, there'll be either bodily harm or some sort of financial penalty, that they're doing something without any other human being making them do it, that they are doing it because they want to do it, that's what people mean by I'm doing it with but my when, own free I'm, will. I'm sorry, let me interject. I mean, it's not, they, they, do, they don't just say about human beings, they say anything. They say, like, God but, can't stop them, you know what I I'm know, saying? I know, but 99% of people I've asked them mean no one's forcing me to do this. I'm doing it. No, I know, but, like, for, so, like, frame it in terms of the traditional debate. In other words, like, Einstein. Well, nothing out of one's control is making them, do, as such as the pleasure principle, laws of physics. But that's not what the average layman means. The average layman means I'm doing it because I want to do it. That's well, what people yes, mean. Yes, but you got to understand, like the average layman, for example, 80, 90 percent of people here in the United States are, believe in God or higher power, right? So what they're saying... I'm glad you picked up on this because I didn't talk to you before about this. I've changed what the beginning is. What people do mean is, you ask, what do most people mean by the term free will? They mean, I'm doing it because I want to do it. And they, That's they, what they mean. Right, and they mean, like, you know, that, that, that God is giving us, like, even though God is all-powerful, I'm They don't think that deeply. I'm doing it. No one is saying, if you don't do it, I'm going to kill you. I'm going, you're going to owe me money. No one's threatening me, and, you know. But, but I'm point, going to school tomorrow. No one's forcing me. But if someone says, if you don't go to school, I'm going to ca uh, kidnap your mother then they'll say, I'm not going with my own free will because I'm being threatened. Right. So the vast majority of people mean another human being is not forcing me. But, all right, but uh, the vast But you want me to refute it, I can refute no, it. No, no, yeah. Nick, but um, what I'm saying is the vast majority of people extend it to not even God is, like, interfering with our ability to choose. People say, like, God gave us this free will because this is a religious concept. you got to remember. I know, but they don't think... If... No, they do, they do, because, like, a lot of people... When are... I say, when people say I'm doing something, they, they mean... No one's forcing me, so it becomes free will. I know, but no, no, you got to understand. Like, if you probe deeper, because like we've done a right, lot. Right now, of, we'll probe deeper. That's what most people mean. All we've right, done a lot of. Dude, I'm right with you, but I'm just saying what I know, people mean. The, but we, the audience got to understand. I'm dumbing it down. Right, we, you know, for uh, for five, six since 2010, six years now, we've also done this monthly debate in Manhattan where we get groups of sometimes a dozen of us exploring this, and so like basically like. People, what people mean also when you, when, you, when you delve into this is like that, no, our genes aren't making us do stuff. Our environment isn't making us do stuff. It's much more than just people and especially God. That says, no, God is all-powerful. God is, um, uh, you know, sovereign, but we have this. We can do whatever we want. But you ask me what do people mean by free will. What my definition is is what pe most people mean, that I'm doing because no, I want to. No, but I'm saying I think most people, like, would extend it. Like, for example, if you ask most people if, No, like, once you say you're doing because... I want to, I could do otherwise, but the thing is, you could have done otherwise if you want to do otherwise, but you don't want to. All right. That gets into the whole thing but, about like, you, <laughs> you are doing what you want to do because of your feelings, and who amongst us is in control of our emotions and feelings? So you do something if no one's forcing you of your own desire, of your own accord, but you cannot control what you desire. But, all right, but what I'm saying is not just, it's not just people. In other words, like you ask the average person, like... Do your are are your genes making you you know choose as you choose? Most people who believe in free will say no, because I have a free will. That's what I'm saying. It's not just people. But if I interviewed everyone on the street and said, "What do you mean by free will?" They would say, "No one's forcing me to do this. I'm here of my own no, accord." No, I know, but, the, but I know. All right, so that's that, you asked me. What are most people that 
You saw, opened no, I know, the show with, gotta, you what gotta, is your definition of what most, most people mean by free will? And that answer, I'm sticking with it, I'm doubling down, all right. is that they mean that they're doing it because they want to do all it. Right, that's all what right. they mean. <laughs> that's right. All right. Here's my answer. My right. answer is like... Well, it's erroneous, that, but yeah. No, no. And this, this answer is not just based on what most people think. Because the, the, the truth is most people don't really understand the free will debate all that well. You know, so like to ask them what it means is kind of like, so, all right, but according to history, the, 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 the free will that Darwin, Freud, and Einstein said we do not have, okay, they're on our side, it's as important for the audience to know this, is like they define free will as like that, you know, we would be able to choose without anything that's not in our control choosing for us. That's the key, like, and then the, the debate. Control. You asked me what regular people I know, think, not I what know. Einstein, Darwin, or whoever else you just mentioned. So like, all right, so like, so idea, so like, let's talk about this control thing. All right, now, so what's not in our control? Obviously, our genes are not in our control. We can't control our genes. Uh, our experiences, what we learn, what we haven't learned, how our parents raised us, where we were born, are we a man or a woman, how old we are, you know? All these things are things we can't control, and Again, with the genes, with all this other stuff, they determine who we are. And now we're getting into why we don't have free will. I want to hear, hear your, your um, explanation also. And so, like, you know, if our genes and our environment and things that we're, that we're not, and also this causality, because everything goes under, um, everything has a cause, and so there's this causal chain that regresses back to before we're born. So these things are not in our control, and they actually decide for us. So that's, you know, that's... You know, control is the key. If something that's not in our control, like even God, God's not in our control, is, you know, and God is all-powerful, supposedly to the, the belief, then obviously we can't have a free will because something that's not in our control is making us decide. All right, so, so we, we've got the free will definition. And before we get into how, why this is more important, we'll, we'll get to the theme eventually. <laughs> before we, we get to why this is more, um, explain to the audience why this, this free will, why did Freud... Darwin and Einstein say that this free will thing is complete nonsense. I thought you were going to say, why did John Searle say it's the most important topic of all I'll time? I'll say that next. I'll ask it. Why do they say it's complete nonsense? Because we are raised with nature and nurture, and there's no room for free will. So it doesn't have to be famous people that say it's nonsense. I mean, you know, regular people can figure out it's nonsense. And it's totally nonsense because, A, we have an unconscious. B, we couldn't have done otherwise unless we wanted to do otherwise, but we didn't want to do otherwise based on our internal nature and nurture, our genetics and our environment. And every decision we make is pr predicated on the, the moment before in, in time. And the moment before in time is dependent on the moment in time before that, stretching back to before we were born. We did not self-cause ourselves. Our parents had sex. Therefore, the cause and effect chain already started outside of our control and uh, our environment that we were raised in and our culture and our parents and everything that was taught to us, we did not choose to, to have those things done to us and that conditioned our nervous system and our feelings and basically we are not in control of our feelings which is our desires. So yes we do what we desire but we don't choose what we desire. Excellent, excellent. So, like, so, and then what, what Nick just described, explained, again, you don't have to be an Einstein or a Freud or a Darwin to understand. This is pretty basic. If everything has a cause, then, like, you make a decision, there's a cause to that, there's a cause to that cause, a cause to that cause. All of a sudden, this chain of cause and effect regresses, go back, goes back in time to before you were born. So, like, if stuff, if this chain of cause and effect, like dominoes, stretches from before you were born to now, there's no way you can have free will. But there's an even... But the regular person doesn't look at cause, they look at reasons. They have a history of reasons. Like, um, you know, I have a banana and an apple in my bag. Which one do you want? Right. Let's say I choose the, the banana. Right. So would you say there's a reason for why you chose a banana or a cause? Absolutely. There's a reason. And I mean, there's both. There's right. actually both, but you're, but you're right. And it's so like, you know, the reason is like, you know, we don't get to choose our preferences, like what, right. what, now you're talking. what fruits we like. You know, some, some fruits like we'd, we'd never That's eat. right. Yeah. But there's, there's, a, there's an even more simple way of understanding why this whole notion of free will is nonsense. It just, it's like, it's incoherent, it makes no sense. Um, if you had a free will, think about it. Free will is like that you can decide and nothing that's not in your control is making the decision for you. So like, 
you know, decades of research. Everybody wants to be happy. That's our, our number one goal in life, to be happy, to become happier and all. Now, if we had a free will, if you had a free will, you'd be able to say to yourself, well, you know, I'm going to be blissed out every moment of every day. I'm going to be happy now. I'm going to be happy, you know, later in the day, tomorrow, every week. In fact, if you had a free will, you could say, like, I'm not going to have any negative emotions at all. I'm never going to be afraid, sad, angry, or anything. So come on, that's, that's the first, um, you know, obviously we, we can't do that. That tells you, you don't, we don't have a free will. The second way to like, let's say I were to ask you, all right, for the next 30 seconds, I don't want you to think anything, okay? I want you of your free will to just blank your mind, don't have any thoughts at all. You could not do that. Why? Because these thoughts that would be coming into your mind over those 30 seconds would not be under your control. As hard as you tried to not have them, they would still come. All right. So Excellent. We, we, thank you. Now, this, uh, again, we'll what if I told you everything is a conditioned response based on one's personal history? Explain to the audience. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a very simple way to understand that there's no free will. Everything in life is a conditioned response based on one's personal history. Basically, going toward, you always are, have no choice but to be, with George's coin, a, a slave to the hedonic imperative. I don't know, is it hedonic imperative you're, you coined I it? I coined or? that, yes. Okay, it's but, like the uh, pleasure principle. Freud said pleasure principle. So why is it that we don't have a free will? Is that we are a computer running with the operating system of pleasure principle. That means we always predict what will give us the greatest amount of pleasure, least amount of pain, an overall life satisfaction way. And... Based on our personal history, we make decisions as that is our reason. What will I predict? Predict, because we're very, you know, sometimes we say that made me miserable, but we're predicting that is the best available option for us at that time with the knowledge and consciousness we have at that time. All right, excellent. So now, well, you know, we, we should do more shows on why we wouldn't have free will. We've done dozens of them, they're all on YouTube. You know, we've do, done, you know, several hundred, whatever, a couple of hundred at least. So, um, but why is this important? Some people would say, fine, we don't have a free will, big deal, it doesn't matter. Nick, explain to the audience, and yet we'll get to the topic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so why is this so important that we get this? Okay, so the belief in free will, which is held by about 95% of the people are, well, in America, I can't speak for the rest of the world, uh, are, are living in a nonsensical way. You know, common sense is, you know, something that we are taught, and we were taught all wrong about this this free will thing. We were taught by either our parents, friends, uh, respected elders, or religious leaders that we have free will. And quite honestly, we were also taught as kids that honesty is the best policy. So we're in a total conflict. And I don't think a conflict in life of the, the exact nature of reality, uh, the paradigm of reality that we're dealing with, should be totally wrong. It's important because all our major cultural institutions, legal, education, mental health, uh, the legal system, the religious institutions are founded on a faulty premise. And it's not good for me, it's not good for George, it's not good for the climate, it's not good for you, the viewer, to be living on a planet where everybody's got the fundamental nature of reality all wrong. Excellent. That's right? why. And, you know, I'd go, we'd go into this more detail, but we really have to get to the topic. Uh, American philosopher John Searle, he was, he was asked, you know, for a 2005 book, if the world were to get that nobody has a free will, what would it mean? Hey, he said, and I'm quoting, it would be a, quote, bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein or Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Darwin. You know, it would, it would again, I quote, um, it would alter our whole conception of our relation with the universe. That's how big this is. This is a bigger revolution than evolution. Did John Searle believe in free will, by the way? Yes, and he believes in free will, so yeah. that, so you So he know was saying if... Right. If everyone understood it wasn't. Yeah. Exactly. And it's not a self-promoting kind of a statement. If, if, if he rejected free will, we, we, might be, yeah. we might think he's just saying it to That's what promote I was thinking, his position. Yeah. So this is a fair assessment. All right. We, so we've, we, know now, we know what free will is. We know why it can't exist. We know why it's important to, to get this. Now let's, let's uh, do, go with the theme. Free will, atheists, and God. Um, the theme is like, for example, like out of you know, the American population at least, the people who get this the most, probably the people who get this the real most are scientists, like hard scientists, neuroscientists, physicists. But among the general population, atheists tend to get this. Atheists tend to get that, no, we don't have a free will because, like, God is defined as all-powerful. And if God is defined as all-powerful, how could anything be up to us? But what's interesting is, like, atheists, even though they, 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 they champion themselves as being so rational, 
so logical in refuting so much of religion, including the existence of God, they actually are rejecting the belief in God. And I'm saying like part of the show is like to show the wait a minute, like, you know, atheists are not being logical with that. In other words, like they, they get that we don't have a free will, but to 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 believe that God doesn't exist is is absurd. Um, Nick, explain why their their conclusion that God doesn't exist is just like is based on ideology and emotion rather than reason. Well, I have to quote the great Albert Einstein. He said, "The more I believe in science, the more I believe in God." George and I have e easily concluded through logic that free will doesn't exist. Free will is an illusion. Now, once you understand that premise that we do not have free will, then you understand, as surreal as it is, that you're not you're, you're just a witness to your own life. There is no you. And we're all basically just puppets. So you know we're intelligent. You know I'm speaking. Uh, George is hopefully listening. Hopefully you're listening. Uh, we have consciousness, this wonderful thing called consciousness. But if, we're not, if we don't have free will, it's not our consciousness. It's not our intelligence. We are puppets. So something is, uh, has created us, and it's not ours. It's theirs or its. Uh, it's this being. So we're very intelligent. And we're very conscious and we can talk and have language and philosophy and opera, and, but it's not ours. Nick, perfect answer. I think we, we should reiterate that because that's important. In other words, like, you know, let's say we were puppets, right? You know, literal puppets and we were doing stuff. Whatever we did wouldn't be up to us. It'd be up to the puppeteer, right? Let's say we were a computer, right? Whatever we did and, did, and you know, would be up to the programmer and the hardware people. We're fine. We're human beings, and, and who, what created us? God created us. So like, if we don't have consciousness... Define the word God. God, all right. That's a good question. All right. God, as not as I define it, but as, like, dictionaries and encyclopedias define it, is, first of all, God is the creator, right? So let's, let's go this, let's take this step at a, one step at a time. If God is the creator, how could, you, how could you say that a creator doesn't exist? You know, in other words, like the Big Bang is the beginning of our known universe. That's all we know to exist. There may be something before the Big Bang or something, you know, outside of our known universe, but we don't know that, you know, empirically. So obviously God is the creator of the Big Bang. The, the Big Bang didn't create itself. Um, another definition of God is God is all-powerful. Okay, for an atheist to say that God doesn't exist is for an atheist to say that the laws of nature don't exist, because guess what? The laws of nature are all-powerful uh, over... So you're saying God is a synonym for the laws of nature. Exactly. And all right, so just say laws of nature instead of God, because a lot of people picture a guy with a white robe and a long white beard anthropomorphic, you know, God sitting in a big chair just uh, judging things. Exactly. And so these, these atheists will define God as a big spaghetti. No, they, they use straw man arguments for defining God, just as like sometimes free will believers will change the meaning of the word free will in order to defend it. Another definition of God that's standard is that God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. You know, there's no place where God isn't. Well, guess what? You know, there's no place where the universe isn't. The universe is omnipresent. The universe is everywhere. So for an atheist to say that God doesn't exist is for an atheist to say, well, reality or the universe Do doesn't atheists exist. say God is all-knowing? Yes, actually. The God, and, and so, all right, with the, with, that's a good point. That's the, a big one for the me. The all-knowing is a bit more complicated, but you've got to think about it. If you are all-powerful and if you are everywhere, everything, how could you not know everything? Think about it. If you're everything, you've got to know everything, especially if you created everything also. Yeah, but we heard that guy Rabbi New in Montreal say God is all-knowing, but you still have free will because you make the decision and then he knows simultaneously. All right. Well, I'm not going to... You refute that. All right. You understand why that's bogus. So uh, pick these cards or my glasses. Your glasses. Right. So if I was God and I knew you were going to pick the cards because I'm all-knowing... Right then you can't pick the glasses because you have to pick the card because I'm all-knowing. So now you have to change your mind and pick the card again because if I'm all-knowing and I knew you would pick the card, you can't pick. I made it physically impossible for you to pick the glasses. So how's, how's that All work? right, but, but Nick, what you just did, though, you kind of like demonstrated why God's omniscience or all-knowingness makes free will impossible. That's what I was trying to do, yeah. No, no, but like, but we were kind of like, you know, does, how do we know God is all-knowing? If I had a free will, I would have answered that perfectly. How do we know God is all-knowing? Right, right. I, I, I said it before. If God is everything and God created everything, how could God not know everything? If you were everything, how could you not know everything? Especially if you created it. Absolutely. 
because there are laws of motion that, not motion, laws of physics and laws of nature and laws of motion that were set into motion at the Big Bang, and I believe that God, the Creator, whatever, just sat back, put these programs, the pleasure principle, the hedonic imperative, in motion, and everything just goes predeterminately based on the program. Uh, it's very hard to predict what will happen because there's so many variables at play, but they're all deterministic. I don't care what you say about quantum physics. So God, or whatever, just set in motion all these variables, but it would be very hard to predict. Excellent. So he's all knowing, but I don't know if he can all predict everything. Okay, now here's a tough one. We're going to get so these that we've explored are relatively easy to understand, but like the atheists, I think, are right on this. And actually, the Bible uh, says something. Atheists say, well, God cannot be all good. You know, most people think that God is all good. Interestingly, in Isaiah, in the Old Testament, God himself says, I create light, I create darkness, I create good, I create evil. So, like, you know, I don't know where they got this concept that God is all good, because in the Bible itself it says God created evil. So, um, fine, and we have to grant the atheists are right on that. All right, God created people to play the role of evil. I mean, it's all faded. So if you're predetermined to be evil, it's not your evil. It's the evil of the universe. And, this and it's subject to perspective and time period of, you know, uh, Looking back now, we could all pretty much say Adolf Hitler was evil, but at the time, if you were raised in Nazi Germany and you had Nazi German parents and they taught you that this guy was great, you know, you would be doing what that culture told you. You wouldn't think you were doing evil. Yeah. I mean, ISIS doesn't think they're evil. They're that's just raised differently. So think who's about, to say? No, that's Sorry. a great point. Um, in other words, also, not just I ISIS, George Washington. If he would have lost that Revolutionary War, he would have been hung, and we would all been British still, and we'd be talking about the historical, this, this, this traitor, this G George Washington traitor that, that killed so many people and was a terrorist. But say so, you're a little kid in ISIS territory, and you heard your father was killed by an American Marine, and the American Marine raped your mother and killed your sister, and your aunts and uncles tell you this is terrible every night at dinner. I can't believe those Americans are so evil. They come over here, they can do it, they think they own the oil. That You would ra grow up not thinking you're doing evil. You would probably behead someone when you're like 20 years. You know, you're so furious and revengeful and avengeful of your uncles and aunts and sisters, whatever I just said, your father was killed by Anne-Marie, your mother was raped. That kid doesn't think he's doing evil. He thinks he's doing God's work uh, to behead an American who happens to, you know, meet him at a coffee shop in Baghdad 20 years later, uh, meets an American journalist and thinks he's evil. So, I mean, what's, no, I hear you, I hear you. who's to define? I mean, no, John, some things you could probably say are evil, but I don't think the person doing it, A, they don't think it's evil. And even if they did, they know that they can't help themselves. Like Elliot Roger was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm evil, but I'm out of control. Right, I hear so, you. All yeah. right, so yeah, you know, evil, you know... No, he what, had my twisted manifest. He knew he was twisted, yeah. Right, John Locke, British philosopher, said evil, goodness is what creates happiness, so evil seems to be what creates unhappiness. But a lot of times, again, we can't know when something's being done. It, it could have an evil intent. A person may be intending to hurt people, in which case that's got to be evil. But, but some people but, watching the show no, would think we're evil for saying there's no free will. I know, will. I know. So, all right, all right. All right. back to the atheists. Back to the atheists. Um... Another thing that they kind of like um, have, have a hard time grasping is, I lost my train of thought. Atheists. Atheists. Hard time grasping. Hard time grasping. Uh, uh, they, they say God doesn't exist. Hard time grasping that everything is not ours. It's a higher right. consciousness. Um, what was it? Um, atheists. See, this is a perfect example if George had a free will, he wouldn't be drawing a blank at this moment. Exactly. All right. So, all right. Now, I, let me see if I can get, get it back. All right. Atheists get that that um, that we don't have a free will, um, but they 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 believe in God. And no, no atheists it's, don't believe it's in not God. Coming. I mean, uh, they don't believe in God, yeah, right? right? Um, Comedy hour tonight. What is? All right, I forget. But that, that's that. Our, our basic point is like atheists, you know, tend to be logical about this thing about they understand why we don't have a free will. But when the, you ask them to like comment on God, they will say they believe in God or they say that, that God doesn't exist. But again, like that, they're kind of like refuting the fact that, that everything exists. They're refuting the fact that, that there's laws of, of nature. And, you know, so... Um, all right, we, we've got what I'm saying is this. the discovery that there's no free will is almost or is, is a proof, 
proof positive that there's a higher power. If there's no free will, think about it logically. This is maybe good news. If there's no free will, it's not our consciousness. I am not talking right now. I am, to I am God talking to God. Everything is the universe. Everything is laws of nature. There's no Nick Vale. There's no George Ortega. We're just brains and we're puppets. So if it's not our consciousness and more importantly, not our intelligence, what created the brain? What created this magnificent world of this computer program of the uh, pleasure principle of the hedonic imperative? Something dreamt this up or came up with it, and it's not us. All right, it came to me. It's it came not to us. Me. It took a while, but if I had a free will, it would have come to me much sooner. Excellent. Basically, atheists are denying that God exists. They're wrong. It's just like, for example, like, and, and, but they, they've got some of it right. In other words, like they should change their, 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 what they call themselves from atheists to accutheists. Like they, they should be championing an, an accurate interpretation of God. And what I mean by that, for example, like in the 40s, you know, the standard belief in physics was that, you know, the universe the way it is now was the, the, uni was the way the universe always was, right? Okay, so, like, that's wrong. Now we know there was a Big Bang, you know, 13.8 billion years ago. So, like, no, no, that, that's kind of like saying, like, well, because they, they, we have a dis different conception of, of the universe now than we did then, the universe doesn't exist. That, that's a similar analogy. So, basically, like, yeah, atheists should say we're atheists, fine. Like, God exists in terms of, like, being all-powerful, everywhere, all-knowing, you know, intelligent, but obviously he's not all good. So, you know, that, that's, that's what they should be saying. We've got 30 seconds. But if there's no free will, if it's not your will or my will, whose will is it? It's God's will. The will of the universe. Which is God, yeah. And, but there and, is a problem. People flip-flop on this. They double-talk. The hypocrisy is sometimes it's their will, sometimes it's God's will. Normally, when it's a good thing happens, I deserve a medal, I deserve a raise. When bad things happen, it's God's will. Everything's God's right. will. And incidentally, Don't Albert, just go Einstein, flip -flopping back Albert and forth. Einstein said that God and the universe are synonymous. Oh, They're the God. same thing. It's called pantheism. Look it up. All right, thanks for watching. We're going to be back, you know, to explain to you why we don't have free will, because it's extremely important. Um, see you next time.